Advent of Code 2025, day one, secret entrance. This is OXDF, and uh, let's take a look. So we always start off with a bunch of story. In this case, we're decorating the North Pole this year. We have to do it by December 12th. Uh, we get two puzzles a day. Each puzzle grants a star, standard stuff. We've reached the door to the North Pole, and we need a password, but it's stored in a vault. And the vault has a um, circular dial that clicks from 0 to 99, and it's a circle. So if we go 98, 99, Back to zero, one, two, similarly, three, two, one, zero, 99, 98, et cetera. Um, our puzzle input is going to be this series of instructions to turn left or right, where left is negative and right is positive. Um, and we need to count the number of times we end at zero or that we stop at zero after an instruction. Um, and, and that's it. Uh, let's jump over to VS Code. Um, I've got my Gen Day script here, and this just creates, um, downloads my inputs, creates a place for me to store the example data and creates a little Python stub for me to start working with. Um, it's, I've used this through the years. Uh, let's go ahead and say do the example. So if I uh, open up a terminal and we dot gen day for day one, uh, I can go ahead here and it creates my files. I'll go ahead and paste my example data in here and save it. Um, we'll check out the input real quick. And it is longer, but otherwise looks basically the same. Everything starts with RRL. You know, there's 3,000. 4,392 lines, um, nothing we can't work with. Okay, so let's go here. How are we gonna handle this? So my stub by default reads in all the lines. It runs the strip function on each of them to remove the new line and then uh, turns that into a list. Um, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna say part one equals zero. We're gonna start with our counter and we'll say positions equal to 50. They told us in the thing that that's where it starts. So we can say four line in lines and we'll, for each one of these, we wanna get a value we're gonna move. So we're gonna say val is equal to int and now what we need to do is pass in line, uh, but we got to replace um, if there's a L, so it's, we're going to replace it with a negative sign, and we're going to do dot replace R with nothing. And now we've effectively turned our line into an int, and we can say zish equals position plus val uh, mod 100. And the mod 100 is going to be that we've, if we go up to 575, that's really just 75. If we go to negative 40, that's just or, uh, what is negative 40? So that'd be 60, I guess. Um, is that right? I don't know. All, all of a sudden, I'm getting questioning my mod. Let's see. Negative uh, 40 mod 100 is 60. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so that looks right. And then we always need to go check if this is equal to zero, uh, part one plus equals one. And I believe we might have a solution here. Let's go ahead and do Python day one uh, example. And oop, did not, where did I, where did I say part, oop, part one? Save. Got three, that's what we were expecting. Let's do input uh, 1092. Let's try that. We got a gold star. Continue to part two. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and read this. Okay, so in part two, we we're using the wrong counting method. So instead of counting where it stops at zero, we have to count every time it crosses zero. So if I am at five and I add 200 and go to 205, I crossed it at 100 and at 200. Um, so this, this, this is actually tricky and I had to stop and think about this for quite a while because there's a bunch of edge cases and we have to think about how to handle each edge case. So first one, so to start off, we'll just, we'll, we can do the standard thing. So we're gonna do is we're gonna say position here and we're gonna get rid of this mod 100. And then, so now we'll have like, if we go from five up to 305, we'll have position 305. We can say, What's cool we can use is, um, let's go to Python again. If I have 305 and I divide by 100, I get three. And if I have negative 105, so let's say I was at five and I went negative 110, and I divide by 100, oops, by 100, I get negative two. And that works really nicely because that's the absolute value of what I want. So what I can do here is I can say um, part two plus equals, abs, the absolute value, of position divided by 100. Um, and, and at first, you might be tempted to say, I'm done, this is easy. But there's a few edge cases we have to think about. Um, the first one, what happens if I end on zero? So I was at five and I went left five. Well, now my position for this value is gonna be zero. The zero over 100 is still zero, so I'm not gonna, but I'm gonna, I wanna count that because I'm, I'm, I'm on zero. So now I need to add, something here that says, let's say, um, I guess we can add it here. If position is equal to zero, part two plus equals one. Now, what if 
on the next line. In fact, maybe we can handle this difference. On the next line, if I then go left again, I'm actually going to count that because I'll go from zero. So I go left five. So I'm at negative five. Um, I don't want to count that. I didn't actually cross zero again. So I need to count that only one time. Maybe I should, maybe instead, well, the, I have to count it the previous time because if the last instruction ends on zero, I want to make sure I count that. But then if I go left again, I need to uncount that. So we're going to come up here and we're going to say, if position is equal to zero and val is val is less than zero. So like we're going to move to the left. Then we actually need to do part two minus one, uh, minus equals one. So we need to take that back if we get to the next one and we're going left, because now we're going to count that again, because we're on zero, we go minus five, we're at negative five. We will count that. We don't want to count that because we counted it before. Um, one other tricky one. What happens when we end on negative 100? So let's say we're at five, we do minus 105. Um, in that case, we'll go through here. So if I'm at five and it, so this, this part's not relevant. I get down here and I go position plus value is negative. Now I'm at negative 100. Um, and if I do negative 100 divided by 100, I get one. But I want two because I crossed at zero and then I crossed it. I ended on 100. Um, and I already checked sort of for this if position equals zero, but I didn't check for if position equals negative 100. You know, negative. This is before I run the mod. Oh, I, I probably should do this here. Uh, position equals position mod 100. Um, sorry, we have to still do that or else we'll break all the solutions. Um, so now let me just make sure my part one still works. Uh, oops, I failed something here. Part one plus equals. Oh, I got to initialize part two. Zero. Um, so part one's still working good. Okay. Um, I don't need you anymore. Um, so, the, the, sorry, that was probably confusing. So for part one, we can, we can basically are just going to update position, mod position, and then check if it's zero. For part two, if we do the same thing. Well, so part two, we're going to say update the position, check this, uh, how many times it went, and add that in. But then we have to handle our edge cases. So our edge cases, one is if we stopped right on zero, we add another one. But if we stopped right on zero, and then the, if, we, if the previous one was on zero and we move left, we need to take that one away because we're going to count it again here. And then the final thing is if the position here, so if position is equal to, let's see, um, if the position here, uh, mod 100 is equal to zero and position is less than zero we're going to do part two plus equals one and that's going to handle the case of where we ended you know five minus 105 and that'll give us that case right there um we could actually simplify this a little bit if we want we could move that well it's we could move this up to an or because we're doing the same thing here but let's see um we can move that to comments so this is like handles um Start position equals five, left 105. Um, this handles position equals five, left five. And this handles position equals zero, left five. So those are our three kind of edge cases we have to deal with here. Um, let's save this and try it against our example. Six, that, that is the answer we we're supposed to get. So we'll try it here and see if we got our edge cases covered. Uh, six, six, one, six. And let's jump back here. And we do six, six, one, six. And boom, we got a star. So um, that's, that covers that. Um, let's transition now to... Uh, the new thing I want to do this year, which is hand it to Claude. So um, I'm going to come back up here like this. I'm going to run Claude. And I've already written up a um, command for this. So if I do flash AOC and day one, Claude's going to start churning and Claude is going to, oh, let's see, crash my computer. Let's see, uh, don't send. Um, cancel. Okay, that seems to be, I don't know what those pop ups were, but we're working. So it's running. Um, I get the date to start with. Because I want Claude to report the time. Um, and I'll go into, I'll probably make a whole video at some point describing the stuff in my Claude file stuff here um, that shows, sets up these commands. But uh, I tried to, man, I tried to get it to not have to ask me to do this. Um, I'll probably try to update this, but um, you want to proceed? Yes. Um, in theory, 
It should not have to cat anything. Um, I'm gonna add that to the instructions. Uh, let's see, how are we doing here? So, let's see, we're still writing. Um, so anyway, this is gonna churn for a minute and I'm put the time in here specifically so that it can see, but oh, it's already got a solution now that solves Claude day one, it passes onto the real target. Um, I was gonna say I pause the video, but maybe I don't need to. It did get, I think those are the right answers. Uh, yep, it did, and they match. So Claude just solved it. Let's take a look now. We can open up Claude to the side. You, we don't need you anymore. So how does Claude handle it? Uh, Claude's solution is a little bit longer. Um, it does same thing, so direction equals, okay, so it's gonna turn Direction equals sign zero and distance here. So it's doing it. It's basically, it's not, it doesn't like my replace with positive and negative. It's going to turn this into an int and chop the first lot character off. Um, and it's literally going to step. Interesting. So um, it is literally just simulating, let's, let's run the whole thing. And it is going to run it back. And every time it stops at zero, it adds there. And then just at the end of each line, it checks that. And there's that, that's a way to solve it. Um, I wonder if that's faster. Let's see. So I'm going to open up a new terminal and we can do time Python day one, uh, day one pi, day one input. So mine takes that and we can do Claude.py. Um, so Claude's is five times faster, four times faster or slower but it's still less than a tenth of a second, so it doesn't matter. I guess if they'd been mean and given us really hard input, um, maybe this would have been a, not a practical approach, but for something this small, it works. So uh, that's day one in the books. Um, be back with you tomorrow. Cheers, bye.